All right, everybody, we are here with Demo, because I'm not trying to put the rest of that crap into my mouth. Holy crap, you have a name, dude. I do. Um, <laughs> we are here on his server. This is the... Oh, I always get the name of this wrong. Devouring Darkness? Yes, Devouring... Devouring Darkness. Yes. Devouring Darkness server. This is his old server. They're going to be starting a new one soon. Hence why I'm here, because, you know, Bear don't do all the tower defense mob things. I have enough issues getting through Greg Tech. I don't need zombies pounding on my door all day. Anyways, we're going to go through a server tour. They, there may be other videos of bases around the place. Uh, afterwards, uh, but it's all yours. Let's go. So Devouring Darkness is the third in a series of a, a hardcore survival Greg Tech themed mods that I've created. We had Zombie Happy Fun Land and Sad Zombie Land and then Devouring Darkness and soon to be Devouring Darkness 2. And the core things that make this different is you can't sleep, so you have to exist through the night. The food is on ultra hard, so you're struggling to get enough food to eat because you have to grow your crops in sunlight and compete to defend your farmland from monsters. The monsters are frequent and very strong compared to you until late game, and that they will seek you out and they will destroy your base. They destroy machines, they destroy crops, they will blow up things in order to get in. Uh, it's very violent, but they are smart and aggressive, and you are not paranoid. They really are out to get you. So on these servers, you don't throw up a pretty castle for looks. You actually have to make functional defensive forts. But once you get past the initial defense, you can live pretty well. Where we are right now is the spawn point where you fall from the sky into the little pool, which is the intersection of the two main roads going through the server. And this is the location of the spawn base. This is the public base new players are welcome to stay at in order to get started. And as you saw, we have a fish trap and a cauldron over there for washing ores. There are several mines underground here, and you can walk right through. This is all surrounded by walls now as a result of the other players that have been playing and living in spawn with different types of food and crops and a very unusual wall that is encircling the base. When I built Spawn initially, it was just in the treetops to provide uh, a safe haven from the nightly hordes. And you're just in luck, because with sunset coming from up here, you'll be able to see exactly why this is so uh, psychologically disturbing at night. So yeah, we actually have elevated crop fields of all the different types of food which is quite a lot now. In the early game, it was very hard to get enough. There are also tornadoes. So there's a tornado shelter that you have to have a solid block over your head or you can get pulled away. There are significantly more crop fields there and over here, including a lot of the processing here, where the forestry work tables are very good for reusing recipes and cooking and pressing uh, all the different food. You spend a lot of time in the early game focusing on your food intake. But if you look out here into the, uh, the distance, the sun is setting, and the forest is getting dark and quiet. Mm -hmm. And at night, it will be absolutely pitch black. You can't see a thing. There's no minor to it. So you have that evil I hate streamer recorder mod in here. What it is, is it's just called, I think it's a setting in random things called Hardcore Darkness, where there's actually a zero light level anywhere. Mm. If you're outside at night, you can't see your feet. Yeah, there's you... a mod called Hardcore Darkness that just does that. I hate that mod. <laughs> and I hate I that setting because it it's I think it, it adds to the persona. This is okay, a horror. Okay, but it but it 
kills people trying to record and stream. Well, that's true. But the thing is, you have perfect lights inside the base, and in <clears> fact, <throat> a large part of your defense is maintaining proper light hygiene. On your F4 and F7 keys, there's two different light meters, so you can get a number light meter and red X's or yellow X's where there's not enough light. And you can be pretty safe if you maintain proper lighting for yourself and your base. Yeah, but see, you don't understand. I have this... You know how most people have, like, different um, stats, you know, in, in games, like their ability to talk to people, their charisma, or their their health? I have a stupid meter. <laughs> But my stupid meter has to fill occasionally. I have to do something stupid to keep this stupid meter filled. And I will get trapped out at dark because I'm just too stupid to take my ass out. And then I can't see. Well, and that is, that is a problem. So as you can see out in the darkness, there's nothing to see. But the main road is lit by nether torches. So there is actually a row of flames on the road that you can use as a beacon now. But that's after two years of civilizing this continent. That's, you know, normally it's just completely black. Hmm. So you could potentially, like, I know I've been running down the road in the middle of the night, and I can run from, from light to light, and then I can see the lights of the base off in the distance and make for the doors. But, yeah, hmm. if you're in an uncivilized area, you can't see anything. So the spawn players have set up basic uh, technology here between the coke oven, there's a uh, smelting array here, and the rest. But uh, most of my hardcore players completely skipped spawn and just went full Rambo off into the middle of nowhere to become their own base. And yeah. I, I built spawn initially to get myself started and to leave a place behind for others. And so there's food and tech here, and there's trees, and a margin of safety. But then after this was done, I packed up a couple backpacks and went off into yeah. the middle of nowhere to build my base. You do have to watch out. You don't want to fall down. here. There are many, uh, many ways right to fall now. down. But uh, it seems quite a few of the other people have put in uh, lots of different trees and things. Oh, I don't know if no, you use fertilized no, dirt much, but it's kind of mandatory here. You, you get into lots of fights, there's lots of monsters, and the growth speed of plants is nerfed to a quarter yeah, of what it normally is. Okay. What I was so, saying is that fertilized dirt is a necessity because you <laughs> have got four times slower crop growth and there's a variety of accelerators in botania and forestry and the rest that can speed up all of your crop but the easiest way is to have the fertilized dirt and it removes the need for having um, a water spot in order to hydrate your tilled land hmm do you have so, ic2 in here we do indeed so you have the harvester and you also have the appetite so the fertilizers and all the rest I was just wondering if that was, if that had anything to do with IC2's crop sticks. No, but, uh, so the PAMS crops require sunlight in order to grow, and mm -hmm. that is one oversight. The crops in IC2, you can grow without sunlight. Yeah, that's, but that was only... my first thought, is I would get past all of that crap with just making IC2 crops for everything. Well, but then you need the food variety and the rest, so it, it's still not as easy as you might think. So this hmm. is just a safety tower going into the river, and the door is underwater to keep the zombies out. Okay. And I was going to try to get you to come downstairs, and let's see if we can't meet some of the neighbors. While we're doing that, I want to ask some technical questions on the back Certainly. side here. What do, you use it, what do you use to keep people from being able to sleep? Uh, there's, is it the Morpheus mod? It makes it so sleep is completely, uh, done. Or is that the old one? It might be Insomnia now. If you click on the bed, it says Tile Bed Insomnia. Ah, okay. I was so just wondering if you are using, uh, Bear Core for that. No, sir. 
<clears throat> see, you need to use bear core. Bear core is better. Because when you check click, that out. when you click on the bed, it tells you to get to work. <laughs> okay, I do prefer that. Absolutely. It tells you, you to can... get to work. Uh, Enderman won't pick up your dirt, your grass, so you don't have to worry about Enderman coming in and just stealing a piece of your dirt. Um, also, bone meal does not work. Yes, bone meal is disabled here too. You yep. you have other accelerators, but bone meal alone will not work. Well, so you can probably hear them if you look at your mini map. You do have monster radar. And you can see that we're surrounded by just a handful right now. Sorry, you can hear the puppy in the background. Um, you can see that right now we've got eh, three or four zombies that are trying to reach us. And mm -hmm. they do path to us. So it goes out four to eight chunks in every direction. And if they spawn, they know exactly where you are. And they will come straight to you. Oh, you so need to turn on the um, GT6 config over mine added. You want hardcore, add the one where they can mine your blocks. So they can't mine their blocks, but the, uh, the special AI mod makes them grief. So they will break beds, chests, crafting tables, and I've configured them for every modded and non-modded light source in the game. I have mm. a test world where I've got pumpkins and jack-o'-lanterns and, like, uh, bibliocrap lamps and every kind of torch, and I put them out in a field, and I'll spawn in a bunch of zombies, and they go out there and they just beat them to death until there's, they're all gone. So, if I go put a torch out here, for instance... Oh yeah, I can it, see you have special AI. There's that stupid guy with the red hat. Oh yeah. Yeah, they all have all kinds of uh, clothing on and armor and stuff, which you don't have early. So. Yeah. But they will You don't have the those. throwing guys, do you? I have the ones with the fishing rod that'll pull you right off the wall and then pick you up and throw you and carry you around until you die. Yes. Oh no, there there's one that'll throw creepers at you. Yeah, there is a thrower. They'll pick up smaller monsters and throw them at you. Yeah, so they can go over tall. They can go over short walls if you're not careful. Okay, so, I was wondering torches. about that. And other things will be if we're not nearby, they will be sought out by creatures. And uh, skeletons can't do anything; they just stand there. But zombies will smash them, and you'll hear this very loud, sharp crack that lets you know that something was broken. And of course, creepers, they can't, they don't have hands, so they will explode on things that they want to destroy, which can take out your wall, it can take out your room full of treasure and chests. It's, it's very dangerous. Yeah, and Greg's rivers are one of the best defenses because for some reason mobs like to dance in the rivers. Water is actually a very effective defense because Monsters only ever swim up. Only players can choose to swim down, which is why mm. over here, the um, this tower ha goes far underwater in order for a doorway to be underwater. In fact, quite a few of my uh, bases over time have used water entrances because it's just so safe. So yeah, you can tell we've got quite a few fans out there. And mm. I do run a mob clear once per day. So if you, uh, like, real world day. So they don't pile up, but they are intimidating, and they are strong compared to early game players. Now, question, why don't you just uh, do Greg Tech spikes around the place? I do in other places, but uh, the zombie help mechanic, every time you hit them, they have, what? what is it, like a 10% chance to summon help? Mm-hmm. I had a server at one point where we were running these mods and somebody put pogo sticks around their base from Tinkers and it turned into World War Z because I, they literally had hundreds of zombies and they would get damaged and summon more. So yeah, I know better than to hurt the zombies if I can help it. I'm pretty sure though that that is a thing that wouldn't happen with GT6. You'd have to try it. Because I'm pretty sure that the punji sticks are made to be a player damage. 
And oh. I think that's the only thing that the zombies can do is they only call for help if it's player damage. I did not know that. And I don't think the Greg Tech Six ones do it as player damage, it's just tile damage. I would I would check it to be sure. Um, but yeah, you also might want to look into the GT6 config because Overmind added some uh, fun options in there. I know for... he was adding the one where um, creepers would sneak up behind you and wait for you to turn around before they explode. Mm. I wish I had that enabled. I, I totally wish I had that enabled. It fits perfectly with the theme. Let me give you one more example real quick before we move on. If you jump up here and get in the ladder and come down, let me see if this connects still. So the door goes into the river, but underneath goes into a mine. So this mine goes underneath the river to, oh yeah, and something's been in here. Hit your F7, because red, red dots are a disaster waiting to happen. So... Clearly somebody, uh, mines can turn into a mob spawner if you don't maintain good light control. So it looks like probably one of the uh, other players was not being careful. So having the F7 on all the time is a, a great survival tactic. Mm. But, uh, when I, you know I all the things to say to piss me off. Oh, well. I but... hate F7. Junior plays with it on all the time, and it's just... I can't stand seeing those X's everywhere. Well, you just have to make sure there are no X's. X's mean you're going to get attacked. That's just all there is to it. Yeah, he's always bitching. Look, old man, you missed this one. You, you need a torch. Go away. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, this is actually a Cassiterite and Tin Mine that is mm -hmm. linked to spawn. And so it's it's fully underground, and it, you know it's easy to go in and mine away all you want. You don't really have to worry about the monsters so much down here, but you really do have to practice good light control in order to keep the mine from potentially becoming a death trap. My wife and I, when we first played with these uh, like special mobs and um, zombie awareness, we had a base that uh, had a staircase going down to bedrock, and we had branching mines off the side. And one day, all of a sudden, we're in, in our, the house above, and just something randomly exploded. And when we respawned, it spawned and ran all the way back. Come to find out that we missed one spot down in the mine, and it became this giant, endless mob spawner, and they were marching up the stairs to kill us. And it took, fun. It took hours of fun, of fun, in order to kill them all and, and put all the light control back in. So this is this is your common way to go and mine and maintain things. Also, it's not uncommon when you build a base on here to build underground roads everywhere because the overworld is so dangerous. My base has, I'll have to send you some screenshots, but I have a journey map where I record every kind of ore that I run into when I pick up rocks on the surface. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I will dig in directions, and I generally will go down to level 45 because it's eh, it's pretty good about not hitting the water. And I I have uh, for kilometers around my base just straight line tunnels going to different targets. It's wild. So if we go upstairs, we can take the road and uh, head off away from spawn if you like. All right. You're going to have to move. I don't know where the... I hear one, but he's not here. Oh, he's over there. He's stuck on the backside. Perfect. Okay, give me so, a second. I got to okay. first off turn off this damn F7 because that's going to get... <laughs> yeah, it is second, outside. Second, I got to make my mark on your server. Certainly. You get one of those, as you know, on every server you log into, and I just leave mine there. It's the certificate of support? Yeah. <laughs> I get those too. They're fine. Yep. Ain't no right. reason for me to keep it. Let me know if you start to run low on food. And that's my way of saying, Bear was here. <laughs> Makes sense to me. <laughs> 
All right. So I've, I'm not doing too bad on food, but we could use some soon. If, if we run into a problem, I will zoom off and get you some. Okay. So the players on here uh, have actually tried to civilize the continent. Uh, I'll, I can send you a link to the dying map and you can kind of zoom around and see. But uh, this particular road goes off to my base and I try to make it big with the... Uh, what is this? The path stuff that you dig up with uh, mm -hmm. shovel yeah. and light. And of course, there are safe houses along the way. No uh, asphalt? I, no, no asphalt. I, I never really did do lots of asphalt. Mm. Uh, safe houses are often marked with a jack-o'-lantern mm. and underwater, so you can swim down into them and the monsters can't. Ah. So they're generally good places to spend the night. They don't always have much. Sometimes a bed, sometimes a little food. So if you can't sleep, why the bed? Respawn location. If you die, you don't want to have to go all the way back. Hmm. True. Yep. And the weather can be a thing, too. There really are tornadoes here, but they generally will target you when you are in a base. And they do not damage blocks. I used to have that enabled. Uh, it's not really survivable, so I had to turn that off. Yeah. So this is actually a monster-proof doorway with a downdraft, so you're going to have to swim across in order to get through the door. Got yep. it. And I think that there is another bed and breakfast here. I know my walk speed's a little high. Um, so, Botania actually is an excellent complementary mod to Greg Tech. It no. gives you some real quality of life in the uh, the Traveler's Belt and the Shoot, the Terra Shatterer. Uh, there's actually a lot of utility in the items that it gives you. No magic. Well, I always try to balance out a tech pack with having at least one magic. So, this is another. If that's door. the only magic mod you have, then yes. at least you pick the least offensive of the magic mods. Yeah, the previous one was Thumbcraft with a bunch of add ons, and that can just get to be too OP. And of course, mm -hmm. the folks on here know how to find the, the rule bending for everything. So, Botania is now OP, and that's why I'm having to change some of those configurations for the new server. I am resetting the clock so we don't get caught out at night on the road. Okay. Now, one of my favorite things on here is hang gliders. I do have those enabled. And between the Rod of the Skies, which comes with Botania, which will launch you upwards, and then having a hang glider, I, I updated the recipe to require plastic and aluminum, so you do have to unlock it through Greg Tech. But then you can use the Rod of the Skies to jump way up in the air and then open the hang glider and glide quite a distance and then zoom a little higher with the Rod of the Sky. It's not unlimited flight, but darn it, it's fun as far as getting around the map is concerned. Hmm. Sounds like an idea that I just gave um, uh, Trins for GTI. Um, he, We were talking about jetpacks and he's like, no, 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 I, I don't want to add jetpacks. And I was like, okay, well, what about a mechanical elytra? Elytra being a new... There's GTIs in 118, so... And I I hate the vanilla go to the end, fly off and find the elytra thing. Yeah, I was going to say, that's the one that spawns babies, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. That's great. I'll have to you got a little one up. Later. You got... Yeah. There he goes. I'll have to come back and fix the road later. It's no problem. But we're basically... He's basically going to be adding a mechanical elytra where you don't have to just go to the end. You can make one with metal rods, plastic, and then it's going to have um, 
the new Elytra can, you can use the firework rockets to fly around with. If you put that on your item bar, right click it, and then just jump, you can fly down the path. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. I know, yeah. but no. Yeah. I, I fight with XAR about that all the time because he does it on ours. Patreon server, and it's like, dude, that's not how hang gliders work. Stop being stupid. Well, if I that, if I did it me... in here, he'd see it, and I'd never live it down. Uh, well, the thing that gets me about the hang glider is that it has no durability, and so it's relatively fast. We used to have a Feed the Beast server long ago, maybe Monster, where everybody just built these giant... Uh, pillars to build height, and they would jump off the top and glide to each other's base and never even have to, you know, civilize the world like mm -hmm. Rose and the rest. So uh, I try to make sure that they are gated behind something, even though they don't have durability. Yeah, that's how I did um, Crash Landing, was I just made a really tall pillar to get me to the city. And then hang glided off that way I didn't have to make a way to safely get to the city, city to deal with the nighttime. So other than the creeper that spawned lots of baby creepers, a lot of the monsters on here, about maybe one in six, is actually an infernal mob that has all the enchantments on it. Ugh, you know, I invisible or blindness or, you know, you walk up and it can throw ghast balls in the overworld. Mm -hmm. The point is the monsters are a lot stronger than you are. And so, as you tech up, you become strong. But in the early game, you don't want to fight. You want to run. You mm -hmm. want to hide. So I was just uh, playtesting on the new server, and I can run around and gather Pam's food. Uh, let me know if you get too low, because I know your food uh, turnover is going to be hard. I am almost out of garlic. I got one tomato, three turnips, and ten apples. Well, we're almost there, so ideally you'll be able to, to walk. If not, I'll zoom off and get you some food. Okay. Uh, on the playtesting one, I'm walking around and uh, collecting the Pam's Gardens. Instead of farming, I'm just letting them duplicate, and then I'll pop one and eat a couple pieces and, and move on. And I've got a little underwater pocket uh, in the middle of a lake. That's actually a common survival strategy. Just put down a, uh, find a body of water that's at least too deep and dig a hole in the middle and hide in it at night. And mm. that does work. By the way, remind me when we get done to uh, talk to you about a uh, friend. So over here is actually a good example. This is one of the early survival towers that we use. Oh, and there's berries here. Haha, -ha, you can grab some of those. Do these work as separate foods? Because I know do. Greg. Each one. Does. Oh, okay. Yep. And I, was I, I, worried I about believe that. I have the death from sugar disabled. Oh, I can't get diabetes. Yeah. So I, the world is hostile enough. You get the sugar buzz, and you can lose some health, but it won't kill you. Oh. Okay. So this is actually like a little jump, and I think one of the ladders is busted. But if you if you can get on top, it's really just a bed in a little fortified room. And under this is a single water dot and a drowning trap. So you can spend the night in this, even during a blood moon. Yes, every third night on here is a blood moon, even though it's not red. Yeah. So you can actually spend the night in one of these, and everything runs into the drowning uh, moat, and then tries to swim up to get you, and you're perfectly safe. So. Mm. Uh, I use those survival towers all the time, early game. But yeah, my base is just straight north from here. Okay. There you are. I lost you for a second. Yes, sir. Yeah, the, the flaming road is really uh, the biggest thing that can tell you where to go. Alright, well, we are at 30 minutes here, and I'm guessing that's your base coming in, so... Let's end off here, and we'll be back in the next one and show off his base. Yes, sir. If you guys are interested in this pack, link will be down in the description. If you're interested in joining the server, uh, contact info for 
where to go to talk to him about that will also be in the link to, in the description below. And uh, like he said, he's going to be starting a new server soon, so you won't have to worry about being behind. Uh, have a good one, and I'll see you next time. Uh-huh.